Good evening and welcome to the December edition of the Manager's Town Hall meeting. Last month I uh, presented kind of a target for uh, my meeting. I wanted them to be shorter. Uh, I was trying to get the live meeting to 60 minutes and the recorded meeting to 30. Uh, well, that didn't really work as you saw. In fact, the recorded meeting actually took longer than the live meeting. So I'm going to try once again to do even better. But as for last week, uh, this is pretty much what we got. So the agenda is a little bit trimmed. Um, I'm going to go through a quick replay of news you need, uh, a little bit about projects underway. Uh, the main focus today is going to be uh, disaster planning. The advisory committee did an update in the live meeting. I'll try to uh, go over that with you. Uh, some activities updates, and uh, of course we don't have questions on this forum, but you can always email me questions and I'm more than happy to answer. So a quick replay. Channel 3 scroll. I said this last week, but I still had questions this week. Important to remember that the scroll at the bottom is not all Victoria Palms con content. Um, there is Victoria Palms CNN headline news and Fox Sports that's running across the bottom and it rotates every hour. So if you turn on your TV when you get back here or um, if you're here now and you see something that looks derogatory about somebody in the news it may be either CNN or Fox Sports but it's not us uh, we're not doing anything that could be construed as uh, news um, it's all about activities events and things happening within the resort so remember uh, Victoria Palms, CNN, and Fox Sports, and it rotates every hour. Fox TV is now on channel 67.1. You probably need to rescan your TV in order to pick this up. It wasn't part of our original channel. This was done by the local Fox broadcaster. It had nothing to do with us. But um, if you do the rescan, you should see it. And by the way, it is now in HD. The uh, original 2.1 Fox was only in digital format. It was 480. Um, it's now uh, 1080 and a really, really great picture for sporting events and things like that. Front gate, just a reminder, if you have a sticker, you can keep to the right and go through, but you have to follow the rules. And the rule is you slow down, allow the guard to look over, and he'll wave you through. Um, but we've had some people that are just kind of zooming through on that lane, and that's dangerous. Um, there really isn't enough room there to do that. I think this is a great way to minimize the waiting at the front gate, but we all have to play fair. I can't afford to have something go wrong and have an accident or have somebody hurt. So keep to the right, drive slow, and uh, we can keep this going the way it is. Uh, we have a new electronic uh, version of our bingo. As I've mentioned in previous meetings, uh, we moved bingo to the ballroom. Um, you should come see what we're doing now. The bingo machine is virtual and it's projected on that large screen so it's bigger than it's ever been. It's easy to see and it has a lot more options and variety. We can do all kinds of really neat uh, games and patterns and things like that. Come check it out. I think you'll uh, have a great time. Street sweeping, just a reminder that um, for the time that the machine isn't broken, I'm still doing it on Wednesdays. And, and just kind of a reminder that uh, if you have a rock front yard, um, you're responsible to get those rocks out of the gutter. I can't pick those up with the street sweeper. You also, um, if you're parked on the street, I don't want to inconvenience anybody. You know, if you're visiting somebody, it's no big deal. Just realize that I have to go around you, and so there'll be a section of the 
um, street that's not swept. Also, if you have a uh, driveway ramp, if you lift that up, I'll pay extra attention. Um, you know, getting all of the dirt and uh, accumulated grit from underneath that. Um, and I don't do the entire resort every Wednesday. We're running about half and half. I get through about half of it every week, and I do the opposite half the following week. So um, anyway, I'm still going with it. It actually is broken right this minute, but I have a part ordered, and hopefully we'll be back on the road next week. A uh, reminder again, don't park anywhere except on your lot. We have reservations far greater than we've had in the past, and it's very possible that the lot next to you could have a reservation coming on it. It's important. If you need to park on another lot, you need to come to the office and notify them. In most cases, we will rent you that lot as a storage lot. Uh, it runs $30 a month um, and allow you to park your car on it. Um, in the very rare occasion that there's some, something very special about your house, not something that you did, in other words, uh, it doesn't count if you enclosed your carport, so now you have no, no place to park. But there are some situations where people um, had things that precluded them from parking. If, if you are one of those very few, um, make sure you contact us so that we can mark out a lot. But in general, you either have to park on your lot or rent a lot. Um, to park on it. I'm not trying to be brutal. That's not what this is about. But it's not fair. I don't think there's a person in the resort who wouldn't love to have a second lot just to park their car on. Um, we, we can't afford that. We can't do that. So please abide by the rules and um, park on your own lot. Don't store anything under your rig. If you have a an RV, uh, the rules are pretty clear that you can't store stuff under the RV, especially not things like a, a car dolly or, or things like that. Um, there really isn't supposed to be anything under there. Um, although, you know, some people do put bicycles or something like that. Uh, we're not going to get on you about that, but you can't store a bunch of furniture or um all of your outdoor cooking gear or, you know, there's, um, we've seen some really crazy things and uh, it just doesn't look good. And, uh, you know, our goal in all cases is to make the resort as nice as it can be so that you're happy with your stay here. And uh, that implies that everybody has to follow the rules. Um, no dollies on lots. Um, we've seen kind of a little bit, um, two or three, where people are um, trying to keep the dolly on their lot. They don't want to let go of it and let it go to the storage lot, but w we just can't have that. We're happy to even move it for you. Um, you know, we make it as easy as we can. It costs nothing to store it back there, but we do need it put back there. I don't believe that there's any risk. Uh, we've never had anything stolen. Um, you know, please abide by the rules. Um, call us. We'll be happy to come get it, take it back there and park it for you and uh, make it work for everybody. No for sale signs and yards. Um, if you've taken a look around, you know that all of our realtors have been informed of the rules and they put their for sale signs on the unit. And why do we do this in the first place? Well, consider that an average home lot for a home in a regular community is equivalent to about three of these lots that we have. And so, um, given that, if you were to take uh, one sign every six lots, it would look like two houses side by side are for sale. And when you look down the street, it looks like a lot more um, for sale units than there really is. 
And I know you probably think that it would help you if you could have your sign out by the street, but the truth is, if we allowed those signs to go out, it would actually be a turnoff for prospective buyers because it gives the appearance that there are too many homes for sale. And let me give you a quick update on that, by the way. We are now at the lowest number of resales in the park that we've been in three and a half years. So um, we went from a high of just under 120, which is about 10%, not unusual in an RV resort for 55 and over clientele. We're now down under 80. We're in the 70s. All that means is there's a lot of activity. Homes are selling. Um, I can't tell you why your neighbor's house sold and yours didn't. Um, certainly there was something that a buyer liked or didn't like, or your neighbor was cheaper or you know whatever the case may be. I don't know what those issues are, but what I can tell you is that houses are selling when they're well kept and priced appropriately. So uh, I think it's a really positive thing for everybody in the resort to see the number of resales come down. Uh, it's bringing a lot of new blood into the, the resort. Um, you know, I think it's positive all the way around. So, but uh, no for sale signs in the yard. If you look in the rule book, there's a specification for the size. It must be a professionally made sign. It can't be spray paint on a piece of wood. And it has to be attached at the building. Don't forget, when you get back here, or if you're here now, um, don't forget about our recycling. Um, we have had a number of instances where people are putting trash in the dumpsters. We think that's probably new people. Um, but you know just remember that we're doing it also we are now seeing the two dumpsters that are closest to the restaurant getting full and then people set things on the ground around them when the ones down by the cactus club are less than half full um, please don't do that uh, you know I don't want to make this difficult for you that's not what we're trying to do we put four dumpsters in to make it easier for people remember that we have the ones down by the cactus club and if you see that the ones by the restaurant are full please don't set stuff on the ground take it down to the uh, cactus club dumpsters and put it in there it just makes it better for everyone it assures that we're not going to have rodents getting into the uh, the stuff that's set on the ground it's just not a good look or a good approach so Remember that we recycle, no trash in there, and that we do have four dumpsters. Your uh, adherence to this is appreciated. By the way, I wanted to announce that the Recycling Committee has expanded what they're doing a little bit. Now in the mail room, there's an additional bucket for deposit of ink cartridges. So your printer cartridges can be recycled, and you can drop them in that bucket that's marked for printer cartridges that's in the library. So I think that's a cool thing as well. Um, more to come, things that are going on this season. Um, cable TV, um, it's still a bit of a work in progress, although the majority is done. Now, if you remember last week, I told you that we were installing new direct TV receivers and new modulators. That's what converts that signal so that we can broadcast it across the uh, cable plant. Um, I think the picture is uh, considerably better than it was before. They've done a balancing, so um, for the most part, the volume is equal across all channels, so it doesn't jump up and down. And in general, the feedback that I've heard and heard at this meeting was that the picture is much better. So uh, look for that when you get back. Uh, we're doing an upgrade to handicap parking spaces. One of the things that I did kind of a, uh, a walkthrough of what made sense for handicap and uh, how were they marked and where were they and 
right off the bat, I realized that we didn't have one at the RV office. We didn't have one at the mail center. Uh, we didn't have one at one of the two laundries. And uh, we're updating those. So we're putting those in. We're also going back to the others and repainting them so they're clearly marked on the ground. And every handicap uh, space is going to have a sign in front of it as well. And that even includes the Cactus Club. Uh, we're putting a pole in between because they're head-in spaces that are back-to-back. -back. And uh, we're putting a pole in the middle of the the two spaces so that you'll be able to see them. So look for additional handicap spaces when you come in and please observe them. Um, you know, let's not park in them unless we need them. Our front fence, the wall across the front of the property, the extension is um, in progress. Uh, I had previously reported that it was three foot. In fact, what I was doing was counting how many blocks we were raising the fence by and it turns out they're 10 inch blocks they're not 12. so we're actually going up 30 inches um and and then it's um cement board rather than uh, precast concrete that's going in between these um, i think it looks acceptable um, it will get painted as will the whole wall by the way and um, it's not only going to give us greater protection from people um, uh, getting over the fence, but I think it will uh, reduce some of the noise from the highway. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, we're about to start pothole repairs, and that doesn't all happen at once. Um, so we've already started marking. So there's one group that's going around marking them. Another group that's saw cutting them. They have to cut them out. And then once we get all of that done, um, the day of or possibly the day before, we'll actually start digging them out. We don't want to leave big holes for any period of time. So when we have the hot mix on the truck and we have the roller on the property, um, we'll start digging them out and we'll make it as quick and painless as we can. So um, should not be uh, too long on that. Soften and fascia repairs. Uh, over time, we've uh, developed a lot of rotten wood in areas where water has been able to get either inside or behind, and we've been repairing that. And we're not putting plywood back on these things. That just makes no sense. So every place we do these repairs, we're using hardy board which is a cement board. It's waterproof. It's impervious to insects. Uh, you know, it's virtually a lifetime product. And that's what we're putting back up so that when we do these, um, if we do them right the first time, we don't have to keep redoing them. So you will see some areas where um, this has already been done and it hasn't been painted yet because we'll go through and swoop it all once we start painting. But uh, we're trying to get the repairs done now. So um, they're somewhat noticeable in some places, but um, that won't last long. We're also going to do the exact same thing to the water mill, the place where the ice and water dispensers are. Um, you know, when I looked at those this summer, uh, you know, my take is this is uh, drinking water and ice cubes, and I want it to look like a place that I want to get drinking water and ice cubes. So uh, we're going to completely refinish the outside of it, get it all dressed up so that it looks like it should. Um, that project should start um, any time now. Um, our landscape committee has been rocking and rolling, and uh, I want you to know that in the live meeting, as soon as this slide came up, um, there was a roaring round of applause for the landscape committee. I have heard over and over and over that as people come back, it's an obvious difference. When you come back, look around, you're going to see the best looking landscape that we've had in a very long time. And this committee is doing it all as volunteers. I'm paying for the materials and I have a staff worker who does the heavy digging work and tilling and things like that. But in general, it's all being done by the committee and they're doing an incredible job. 
So, um, and in fact, I have a bit of an update that the people at the meeting this morning don't know about. Um, Claudia Gott has been leading that group for us, and she went back to Missouri for Christmas. I think she's been there one day. She slipped, fell, and broke her hip, and she goes in for surgery tomorrow, which will be Friday the 23rd. So um, uh, I know your um, um, thoughts and prayers are with her. Um, it was pretty much a shock. She's so active and, um, you know, just go, go, go all the time, and, and uh, that's going to stop for a while. So um, anyway, um, the next project for the Landscape Committee is the Cactus Club. They're going to remove the grass. They're going to create kind of a uh, free-formed planting area for flowers. They're going to include some shrubs. There's some cactus that are still there. It'll have the weed block and then the stone on top of it like we've done in the other areas. I think it will be incredible. All right, let's step into uh, kind of a quick overview of the first iteration of our disaster planning, which is emergency notification. I've mentioned this previously. We're actually uh, rolling it out now. And this will provide notification for weather emergencies, um, power outages, water outages. Um, it's not going to be used for advertising. So I will never send you a a notice that there's a dance or a, a party going on or something like that. This is emergency only. Um, the weather emergencies are automatic. They're generated from the National Weather Service. Um, electrical outages and water outages will be generated by me uh, as they actually happen. The key is um, that you have to register. I can't register you. Well, um, that's a lie. Okay. I really could register you, but I don't have enough resources to do that. And so this is a self-registration um, process. We selected the company that's doing this based on the fact that they had a very simplistic uh, registration. But even that I know could be beyond the capabilities, the computer capabilities of some people. And so if you really can't figure it out or, or make it happen, you can go to the computer center and the uh, computer club has agreed to help you get registered. So if, you're, if you really aren't into the computer thing, um, go up there and um, they can help you. And by the way, if you're still at home, you can register as long as you know your information. Remember to put the information in that is for down here. And um, you can be set up and be getting notifications just as quickly as anybody else. When you do it, you get to select your method of notification. It can be a voice call where your phone will ring and there will be a computer-generated voice that will tell you what the emergency is. It could be an email where an email will come in that has all of the information in it. Or it can be a text message. And it can be any one of these or all of these. That's up to you on how you want to do it. You can cancel at any time. There's no cost to you. I'm paying for this. I stripped a little bit of money out of a few other projects so that I could make this happen. And uh, because I think it's so important. I was absolutely terrified when I realized that we have no tornado sirens. We have no type of emergency warning system here in our area. Um, this doesn't replace a tornado siren in the middle of the night, but it could send you a text message or ring your phone in the middle of the night if there's a tornado warning for our area. Uh, I think that's incredibly important, and I think everybody should register for this. I did provide instruction forms, which will still be here when you uh, get here, but I've also included most of that in this presentation. So if you're doing this remotely and want to try to register, hopefully there's enough information in this video um, that will get you through it. So first off, you'll see on the top of the page here the site that you have to go to. 
um, and you have to type every bit of that in in the address field not in the search field that's not going to find you anything you have to do it in the address field uh, up at the very top of your browser that will take you to this window that you see here if you've not registered you click the register now button to register if you have registered previously you can sign in using your username and password and if there's something that you wanted to, to turn off, let's say uh, you got phone calls and you decided, I don't like that, um, log in with your username and password and just click that phone calls. It will tell you or ask you, are you sure? You say yes and it's done. It's that easy. So, uh, but this is your first step. Click register now if you haven't already it will bring up this screen and you'll notice on this screen there's multiple bits that you have to enter um, you'll have to enter a password and that has to be six characters minimum with one uppercase and one number other than that you can put anything you want in there but it has to have that or it will reject it you have to put in your first and last name your phone number if you're going to do anything with voice or text uh, you have to put in an email address the email is going to become your login information and so there's no other way to be able to do that other than uh, to have an email and I'll show you why a little bit later your address goes in here put your full address in and once you get that in click the validate address it will actually put a map locator on your address now as it stands right now because we're all 602 um, it, it's going to put that map locator in the same place but I have the ability to go in afterward and split it out by streets so for example I could send an alert to everybody on Margaret saying the water on Margaret is going to be out and not have to bother anybody else in the park so that's why the complete address including your lot number is important when you say validate address it will also bring up your latitude and longitude and uh, that will get altered by me when I put you um, in the proper street area once you've got all that information in, clip, click the Submit Registration button, and that will complete your registration unless you want to make updates to it. At that point, the verification screen will come up, and this is in place to make sure that we're not getting spammers or people putting Mickey Mouse names out there or something like that. So your email that you entered in there is going to receive a message from SwiftReach with a four digit code you have to put that four digit code in here and then you click the um, complete registration and then you're 100 percent done and online if there's something that you want to change or add you go back to that address at the top you log in using your email address and the password you created and it brings you to this which is your uh, subscription um, there's a number of things you can do here but right at the top are the main categories so you can if you change your mind or you think you did something wrong you can take yourself completely out with one click again it will come up and ask you are you sure but other than that you can get the whole thing out if you want to update your contact information click the my contact info button and it will take you to that if you wanted to add a family member so perhaps uh, the wife registers but wants the husband's information in there just in case you can add household members through this button um, again, all of it's very simple and pretty straightforward. If you were to go into my contact information, you would see this screen here. Here you can change things. Uh, of course, this is mine. Uh, has my name, has my email. I don't have a fax or pager. Uh, 
I want everything in English. Um, there's no pin code that needs to be done. I don't have a special provider. So, you know, again, I don't have to change any of that. But if, <coughs> excuse me, if I wanted to add text notifications, because that's not the default, I would go to phones and say edit. And assuming that that's a cell phone, all I have to do, it comes up and there's a little checkbox. It says, would you like to have text? And you click that. And this little text SMS box at the end will change to yes. If you um, needed to make a change to your uh, address for some reason, let's say... Um, um, you mistype something kind of like I did with the city of uh, uppercase D, uppercase O, and NA. You can click this edit and you can make any changes you need there. Now, if you wanted to um, add a second phone or a second address, you can do that through these add buttons. If you click the add phone, it will let you put in a second phone. So let's say you registered with a landline phone that of course can't do text but you could add your cell phone to make sure that it rings on both of them um, same for an address um, you know let's say you have more than one property here you could add a second address there's no need to add your remote address your uh, uh, back home address um, that has no bearing on what's going here and in fact it would confuse the system so you don't want to do that. Um, if you wanted to cancel, um, kind of as I showed you in the beginning, again, go to that same uh, address, sign in with your username, which is your email and your password, and then click any of these things that you wish to unsubscribe. Uh, again, you can go into the tool and edit them, or you can just kill them all together from this um, interface. So that was kind of the rundown. Again, if this is, um, I went through that pretty fast. If if it's um, too much to even consider while you were away, when you get down here, stop in. You can pick up an information sheet that has all of that, and you can also um, go to the computer center and get the computer club to help, and they're more than happy to. At this point, we switched over and I handed the microphone to uh, David Doty. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, I um, handed the microphone to... Um, um, all of a sudden, my mind went blank. So right now, you all are laughing. But um, um, anyway, I handed the mic to the um, Advisory Council fill in. Uh, Kathy Butcher is actually back home for vacation, so she wasn't here today. And uh, so she appointed somebody to speak. He came up and he talked about uh, a number of things, uh, predominantly the uh, vpractivities.com website, how they're uh, installing uh, a new uh, tab and some applications there that will allow you to apply for an advisory council position online at the uh, at the website. Uh, of course, you already can go on there and submit a suggestion form and or compliance form. And remember that you can do that anonymously. If you want a response, You've got to give us a way to get back in touch with you, and we do for every single one who gives us feedback. But if you're complaining about your neighbor and you don't want your name to be on it, you can still do that. Uh, we won't get back to you, but I can guarantee you that um, we will address the issue. So no matter how you do it, it's important. This is a great feedback mechanism to come back to us and let us know what's going on. He also mentioned a new uh, kind of subcommittee that's being formed to uh, handle our flags in the resort. One of the issues that we have is the uh, when there's a government proclamation that the flag is supposed to be at half staff, 
who does that and and how do we get notified well there's a volunteer committee being formed that is going to um, uh, uh, drive that for the park to make sure that all of our flags are done as they should be to make sure that there's no um, ratty flags flying to make sure that if we have a pole with multiple flags um, that they're done correctly and when they go to half staff that's addressed so a lot of things going on there um, if you have an interest in they they would love to have you as a volunteer um, if you have an interest contact David Doty um, I don't have his contact information right here, but drop me an email and I'll get it to him and uh, we'll make sure. And, and this is not, you know, this is one of those things that you can volunteer for that's not going to uh, be like a full-time job. You know, this happens usually not more than once or twice a month. It probably takes an hour. You'll have help. To, to run around or maybe if we get enough people um, each person will be responsible for one of the flags you know it'll take you just a few minutes to go to that location and adjust as a as appropriate um, you know it's a pretty easy way that you can do a significant um, value add for the community so uh, see them and uh, I think that was it on the advisory committee update. I have some activities updates. Um, first off, uh, you should recall that we started uh, Yard of the Month. The winner for the Yard of the Month receives a $50 Home Depot gift certificate. So, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, $5 off your next uh, uh, dance or something. It's a $50 Home Depot gift certificate. And, and I want you to know that the winner was selected not for having the most extravagant yard, you know, not the most plantings or the, the um, you know, most uh, unique things. It was for having an incredibly impeccably maintained yard edged and and uh, weeded and mowed and and uh, you know this owner spends a lot of time in their yard and they're very very proud of it um, they have a sign that will be um, posted in their yard um, for the next 30 days and we will do this every month um, December through March so plenty of time for you to get involved in it and I think it's a really really cool um, thing and uh, you know people were pretty impressed with it anyway December's winner is Brent and Mary Perry on lot 26 um, stop by take a look uh, we absolutely encourage that secondarily for December only we did a Christmas lighting contest and I should mention that on both of these you have to enter in order to win I don't have the manpower to go around and look at every single lot in the resort and try to determine which is best um, it would be a massive undertaking but if you're doing something special if you want to be considered it's a, a no harm no foul sign up at the activity center and we will make sure that you're judged um, along with the others that registered so <clears throat> of the Christmas lighting registrants the winner um, for this year was James and Margaret Collins lot 3348 um, and let me tell you that there's an awful lot of great lighting here this year um, I think by far the most that I've seen in a long time some beautiful beautiful lights I wanted to uh, so give you um, the runner-ups so that um, you know if you're here before they're taken down please go around and take a look at them so uh, lot 84 the Garza's lot 172 the Finks lot 251 the Zachows and lot 2377 the Sutherlands were all very very strong runners-up and and there's some that are every bit as good that 
you know, didn't enter. Um, the award for this was, again, a $50 Home Depot gift certificate. So um, keep this in mind for next year because we'll absolutely do it next year. And if we get enough people signing up, we can even break it down into categories. What I would like to do is a, a manufactured home category, a park model category, and an RV category. We have some pretty incredibly well um, decorated RVs as well. So I think we can make this a lot of fun and make the whole resort look better. So remember it for next year. Um, a few other activities updates. New Year's Eve almost sold out. There's 70 seats left. Remember that uh, we have live music. Uh, Pelican West is playing. Um, we have a photo booth with the free photos and costumes and pranks and all that stuff like we had last year. Um, the price of the ticket includes hot hors d'oeuvres, which we'll be serving for, I think, the first two hours of the event. Um, leading up to the dance. Um, we will uh, also have snacks and uh, other munchies on the table. Um, but also remember that you can bring anything you want. Last year, you probably recall that there were some tables that you could hardly see the table for all the food. Well, remember that we're going to have um, stuff that's included, but feel free to bring anything you want. And we'll also have noisemakers and, you know, all of that good stuff. So um, if you have an interest and you're going to be here in time, call and get a ticket. Welcome back. Luncheon is January 5th. Like last year, we'll be doing two sessions. There's an early session and a little bit later session. You can sign up right away. Um, you have to go into the activities office, and uh, they'll give you your tickets depending on which one you sign up for. Um, my only caution is the early one is uh, filling up faster than the later one. So if you do want the early one, um, I would say it'd be a good plan to get in there and sign up while there's still tickets available for that. <clears throat> the not so newlywed game, uh, we had a, a test run of it. In fact, there were six couples on stage and about 50 people in the audience, and it was hilarious. Uh, Cindy and I were one of the couples, and uh, I won't give too much away other than to say that I've had numerous people come up to me outside of the, the game with the subtle suggestion that perhaps I should spend more time with my wife. So I'll just leave it at that. It was a lot of fun. People in the audience had fun. We're looking for people to sign up to be one of the couples on stage. And nobody's going to pick on you. Um, it's just fun to laugh at... Uh, at each other and uh, allow the audience to kind of laugh along with you. It was really fun. Uh, patio sale. Our first patio sale of the year is January 21st. Remember that we're not opening the park to allow people to just like charge all over us. We're moving everything up to the activities, I'm sorry, to the ballroom parking lot. In the event of rain, we'll move it inside. And if you have something that's too large for you to move, register at activities and we'll have the maintenance crew coming around, um, picking these things up and moving them up there for you. We'll also move them back if for some reason they don't sell. So this way we protect the sanctity of our park. We don't have who knows who driving through. Um, there's no issue with people, you know, scoping us out for a break-in or, or something like that. Yet you will still have the opportunity to sell the things you're trying to get rid of. And honestly, I think it'll be even better. It'll be like a miniature flea market where... Um, you know, people will be able to come in and park and um, see everything. You know, nobody will be missed because of the location, because they're on a side street or, you know, it's not obvious where they are. I think it's a, a good um, alternative, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. 
now I want to give some last minute kudos. Uh, you know, I did this last month and uh, there'll be more next month. There's just so many people that are doing so many things. It's incredible. I'll start off with uh, Ken Lane, who is the chairperson of the race group, um, the club that we have here at um, Victoria Palms. Um, but what you don't know is, I mean, that's one thing, organizing the events, getting the club together, making decisions about how they're going to do things. They're doing some fundraising. But what you don't know is they are completely rebuilding the track as we speak. Um, they've got some heavy equipment back there. They've had, I think, five truckloads, I mean, dump truckloads of dirt brought in. Um, the track is getting a little larger, but it's being redesigned such that there's a an advanced um, way to run the track as well as a more simplistic way. So you can run an oval or you can run a road course on the track. I'm super excited to see it. They're doing an incredible job. Um, I would imagine within another week um, it'll be done and uh, we'll be racing on it. So um, kudos to Ken and the entire team that's working on this. There's a lot of people behind the scenes. It's not just Ken, but, um, you know, a lot goes on there. Uh, Burton Louise at the Cactus Club. <clears throat> you know, in conversations with various people in the resort, I know that there are people that love the Cactus Club, think it is the greatest thing of any resort in the valley, and there are other people who swear they will never go there. Um, I go there. I think it's a, a wonderful amenity that we have. It's different than anything else we do, and, and I just think it's great. But, you know, whether you love it or hate it, you can't deny that Bert and Louise do an incredible amount of work. And one of the things that I talked about in the live meeting was people don't really understand where the money goes. Well, obviously, they have to pay for their uh, uh, entertainment. They uh, pay for the, the things that they sell at the concessions. And so the question came up, uh, well, what do they do with that money? Well, this was a surprise to me because I thought everybody knew. They actually donate any profit that they make back to other clubs and activities. For example, in the live meeting, I looked over at uh, Brian McPherson with the first responders, and I said, didn't they give your group money last year? And he said, yes, they donated $500 to the first responders. So the cool thing about this is not only are they doing the contracts and the licensing and the insurance and all of the things that it takes to, to keep that place open, but if there's anything left over at the end, and there usually is, they donate it to help other clubs continue to, to function and to upgrade their things. And uh, it's just a, a wonderful, wonderful deal. So love or hate the Cactus Club, uh, you know, kudos to Bert and Louise. Beanbag, Joe Connors, you know, this is probably one of the best run uh, groups or, or teams or committees or however you want to say it. And, uh, you know, they just do an incredible job from um, creating the materials to organizing the events to always being there when things are, uh, you know, when the <clears throat> beanbaggers are there. Um, the group keeps, keeps getting bigger and bigger. I mean, they literally fill up the entire ballroom. If you haven't been up to see it, you should. It's pretty interesting. Um, I don't know that I could do it because I'm pretty um, um, non-athletic, and it's actually a bit of a workout. They have these uh, uh, receptacles. I don't know what they're called, but the things they throw the beanbags at um, are pretty far apart, and it's a pretty good toss to get them across there. So uh, hat off to uh, Joe and the team. There's a group that does all of this. Uh, they do a really good job. And Doyle Cummings. So I have to tell you that in the meeting, I had misspelled Doyle's name. There was no E on Doyle. Uh, 
And so um, he stood up, he had a comment and a complaint. And I didn't know what he was going to be saying until he said, you spelled my name wrong. So anyway, um, it got um, quite a few laughs because it was really dumb on my part. Anyway, the, um, uh, you know, Doyle does an amazing job with the bingo. Not only does he organize it, um, do all of the money collections and all of that, if you haven't been there, then you don't even know how it runs. And he goes out and buys flowers. Um, and these are a uh, an additional award beyond the money thing. Um, every penny that's spent for the uh, cards to play is awarded back as uh, 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 prizes. So it's completely nonprofit. Doyle does this all out of the goodness of his heart and spends a lot of time doing this stuff throughout the week to be ready for that. So again, it's one of those things where we rely on Doyle and Joe and Burton Louise and Ken so heavily um, to keep these functions rolling because there's just no way that we could afford to have enough employees to do that. And this makes it better for everybody. So even if you don't play bingo, um, tell Doyle he's doing a good job. And you might just want to stop in and take a look because now that it's in the ballroom, there's plenty of room. You can see the board from everywhere. Um, you can bring snacks and, you know, your favorite drink and, and buy a couple of cards and sit there and have a great evening. Um, you know, it's a lot of fun. And, of course, there's many, many more, and we'll keep going through those uh, each month. So um, with that, I went to questions. There were a few questions. Um, I actually am not going to go through those in the interest of time. Um, but there was, you know, I'm not like glossing anything over. There was nothing that was out of the ordinary. There was nothing that was, uh, you know, derogatory. Um, you know, everything was good. It was a very, very nice meeting. And um, I think everybody enjoyed it. I actually finished the live meeting in one hour. And then we talked and did, you know, some additional things for about 30 minutes. So, but with that being said, my uh, fervent wish for you is that you have happy holidays no matter where you are. I hope that everything goes as you expect it to. Uh, please travel safe as you come down to see us or wherever you go. And, um, you know, we're looking forward to you getting here. So... Happy holidays, and we'll see you very soon.